a British monarch would only abdicate the throne under one circumstance, royal expert Dr. Ed Owens told Express.co.uk. British monarchs scarcely abdicate the throne, instead choosing to rule until they die. However, there are a narrow set of circumstances that might see the sovereign choose to relinquish their position. Her Majesty has postponed engagements for the second time in a week following her positive Covid test. Buckingham Palace confirmed that two virtual audiences, scheduled to take place later today, are being rescheduled. The Queen also cancelled virtual engagements on Tuesday, but did hold her telephone audience with the Prime Minister yesterday. A palace spokesman said she will continue to carry out light duties, and no further engagements are scheduled for this week. Concern over the monarch's health remains after a flurry of health scares at the back end of last year, including a short stay in hospital and a period of rest under doctor's guidance. Buckingham Palace confirmed that two virtual audiences, scheduled to take place later today, are being rescheduled. The Queen also cancelled virtual engagements on Tuesday, but did hold her telephone audience with the Prime Minister yesterday. A palace spokesman said she will continue to carry out light duties, and no further engagements are scheduled for this week. Concern over the monarch's health remains after a flurry of health scares at the back end of last year, including a short stay in hospital and a period of rest under doctor's guidance. With her 96th birthday just a couple of months away, questions have been raised as to whether she might give up her position and take some time to rest after more than 70 years of serving her country. Dr. Ed Owens, a royal expert and historian, told Express.co.uk that it is very unlikely she would ever step down, adding abdication is considered a bad word within royal circles. He argued that they would only step down if there was a scandal so devastating it threatened the monarchy as an institution. Dr. Owens said, I think it is highly unlikely that she would abdicate unless a future monarch of Britain is physically unable to perform the role, hence abdication may be considered as an option, or they bring the monarchy into disrepute, for example through some kind of personal scandal, and therefore essentially resign and pass on the role of monarch in the hope that it will ensure the survival of the crown. However, he later clarified that if a monarch was physically unable to perform their role, they were more likely to have their heir act as regent, while remaining monarch in name until they died. There is precedent for this, as King George IV acted as regent for his sick father King George III for many years. The reason abdication is so taboo in the modern British royal family, compared to European royal families for example, is the crisis of 1936. After ruling for just 326 days, the Queen's estranged uncle, King Edward VIII, became the first English monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne in December 1936. He was intent on marrying American divorcee Wallace Simpson, but their marriage was opposed by the government of the time, and the Church of England did not allow divorcees to remarry in the church if their former spouses were still alive. Despite an apparent united front against him, Edward could not be dissuaded. He chose the love of his life over being king, and relinquished his position. The scandal surrounding his abdication has left a sour taste in the mouth of those within royal circles ever since, so it is highly unlikely that any British monarch would ever follow suit. If Her Majesty was to become too ill to carry out her duties, Dr. Owens suggested a plan could be in place, but such a plan does not include abdication. He said, if she was to become very unwell, it might be that Elizabeth II essentially retires from all public roles handing over power and leadership of the monarchy to her successor as part of what is termed a regency. There is more recent precedent for this going back to the late 18th century when George III's eldest son ruled as his proxy due to the monarch's ill health. George IV served as regent for nine years while his father, George III, remained king, eventually rising to the throne in 1820 upon his father's death. Andrew Loney, a historian and author, told Express.co.uk last year that the monarchy is already in a period of soft regency, in which Her Majesty has taken a step back. He explained, we're in a period of what can be called a soft regency, in effect the Queen is standing back, not doing many roles. He said, if she was to become very unwell, it might be that Elizabeth II essentially retires from all public roles handing over power and leadership of the monarchy to her successor as part of what is termed a regency. 
There is more recent precedent for this going back to the late 18th century when George III's eldest son ruled as his proxy due to the monarch's ill health. George IV served as regent for nine years while his father, George III, remained king, eventually rising to the throne in 1820 upon his father's death. Andrew Loney, a historian and author, told Express.co.uk last year that the monarchy is already in a period of soft regency, in which Her Majesty has taken a step back. He explained, we're in a period of what can be called a soft regency, in effect the Queen is standing back, not doing many roles. The roles that she is doing are being accompanied by Prince Charles, everyone is being prepared for Charles and Camilla. As a result, William and Kate, who seem to be very popular, are stepping into the position that Charles and Camilla had. He added, because they are, I would say, almost more popular than Charles and Camilla, they've probably been given a higher role.